Dust swirled through the broken streets as the armoured Fiat drove forward, its plated shell cutting through splinters and rubble without hesitation. The raised hull gave crews the margin they needed when openings narrowed and resistance erupted from the edges of the route. Reinforced suspension carried the weight without drifting offline, even as the surface collapsed beneath it in unpredictable jolts. It felt less like a truck and more like a decision that refused to be reversed. It lacked refinement, but it supplied exactly the safety demanded at the front. The first requirement for the Fiat Protetto emerged from a theatre where mobility was dictated less by distance and more by the sheer hostility of the terrain. Convoys in Italy and the Balkans faced narrow towns, soft verges and sudden ambushes that punished lightly built transports. The earlier Fiat 626 chassis performed solid logistical work, but its unarmoured cab left crews exposed during escort patrol and supply duties that no longer resembled simple road movements. Strategists recognised that a heavier, taller, more defensive vehicle was necessary to keep columns functioning under persistent threat. Industrial constraints shaped the urgency of the project. Italy needed protected transports that could be built on existing truck lines using components already in full production. The 626's ladder frame construction offered a practical starting point, but demands for improved survivability required thicker side panels, higher bonnet assemblies, and a more powerful engine capable of moving extra mass without collapsing performance under load. Reports from contested towns showed how easily small arms fire could halt a supply route, prompting engineers to rethink what counted as a standard military lorry. In these conditions, the need for the Protetto was defined not by ambition, but by simple mechanical necessity. Its intended role was to safeguard movement, carry personnel with more confidence, and reduce the frequency of immobilised vehicles scattered across contested crossroads. Design offices supposedly debated whether the new armour or the roads themselves would break first. The requirement was clear a transport strong enough to keep moving under pressure, whatever the route demanded. The concept behind the Protetto emerged from a doctrine that treated mobility and protection as interdependent rather than separate demands. Italian motor transport had already demonstrated the versatility of the 626 platform in towing, supply and personnel roles but frontline disruptions showed that unarmoured bodies could not survive the shifting nature of convoy warfare. The vision was to produce a protective shell built upon an already mature mechanical base, eliminating the delays associated with designing a new vehicle from the ground up. This thinking relied on a simple engineering principle. If the core structure had proven reliable under sustained operational mileage, it could serve as the spine of a defensive carrier. The extended wheelbase of the 665 variant offered increased stability under weight, allowing armour plating to be added without overwhelming the chassis geometry. Axle housings, transfer points and spring assemblies required strengthening to counter the additional mass, but these modifications could be integrated without significantly slowing production processes already calibrated for wartime output. The result was a platform envisioned as rugged enough to handle additional stresses without collapsing under its own enhancements. Context from the wider theatre reinforced this direction. Air raids, partisan activity and contested passes demanded vehicles that could exist in the same operational envelope as artillery tractors and infantry transports while offering far greater survivability. The aim was simple create something that wouldn't flinch every time the landscape tried to ruin the day. The Protetto's conceptual foundation was therefore not an experiment, but an adaptation born from practical necessity and the realities of mechanised movement under fire. 
The construction of the Proteto relied on production lines already proven through thousands of earlier 626 series chassis. Factories adapted their jigs and presses to handle heavier longitudinal members, reinforcing the ladder frame to bear the increased load of armoured coachwork. Riveted plates were mounted onto a strengthened cab frame, forming a protective envelope, while preserving the essential proportions that made the underlying vehicle so adaptable. Workshops recalibrated stamping dies to cut thicker steel sheet, and welding benches were rearranged to facilitate assembly of more rigid structures that resisted flex under strain. Engineers modified the powertrain sequence with similar attention to stress tolerance. The diesel engine, already valued for durability, required adjustments to fuel delivery and cooling airflow to prevent performance drop when pushing the heavier body. Radiator housings gained improved bracing and ducting was reshaped to maintain circulation during long climbs or slow-moving convoy work where high heat and low speed created difficult conditions. The transmission remained familiar to mechanics, but strengthened mountings were introduced to protect it from the amplified torque reactions caused by the new mass distribution. Component integration was equally methodical. Brake systems received uprated drums to counter the increased stopping distances that larger vehicles imposed on mountain roads and tight urban routes. Spring assemblies were thickened, with revised shackles designed to reduce fatigue during repeated manoeuvres over broken surfaces. Even the toolkits grew heavier, as if the vehicle insisted that anything working on it should share the burden. Every stage of construction focused on turning a proven transport platform into a protective machine robust enough for contested territory without halting the production cadence demanded by wartime industry. Field trials for the Proteto unfolded in conditions that exposed every mechanical weakness a heavy, armoured truck could reveal. The additional weight pushed suspension components to their limits on fractured rural roads, forcing evaluators to record how leaf packs behaved when exposed to constant vertical shock loading. The reinforced chassis structure demonstrated the expected rigidity, but turning radii increased noticeably requiring adjustments to convoy spacing in areas where streets narrowed abruptly or where broken masonry intruded into the roadway. Engine performance under load became a central metric during these trials. The diesel plant produced consistent torque at low speeds, but long ascents highlighted the effect of the armoured body on thermal management, driving engineers to monitor coolant behaviour during extended climbs. Airflow through the front grille proved adequate in motion, yet slow movement testing in built-up areas emphasised the need for constant attention to temperature levels, especially when the vehicle operated alongside other engines, generating additional heat in confined spaces. Braking and traction evaluations produced equally clear results. Heavier drums improved stopping capability, but lengthened maintenance intervals while the increased mass shifted weight distribution toward the forward axle, altering grip characteristics on wet or dusty surfaces. The Proteto could stop reliably, provided the driver respected the simple rule that momentum now had opinions of its own. Documentation from these assessments confirmed the vehicle's ability to function within the operational demands placed upon it, provided crews adapted to the realities imposed by armoured weight on a transport-derived platform. Operational use of the Proteto revealed a vehicle that met its primary objective, keeping personnel and supplies moving through contested ground with a far higher level of survivability than standard transports. The armoured envelope resisted small arms fire that routinely affected unprotected lorries, allowing convoys to pass through areas vulnerable to sudden attacks without the frequent disruptions associated with soft-skinned vehicles. Its elevated frame and strengthened suspension supported the added protection without compromising structural integrity, even when operating on uneven surfaces that challenged lighter equipment. The broader logistical network benefited from this robustness. 
protected transports reduced the number of halted columns, enabling more predictable scheduling for supply dispatches moving through narrow Italian towns or mountain passes. The Protetto's ability to carry troops safely through fire-prone zones allowed commanders to reposition personnel with reduced exposure, making it a valuable component of movement planning in regions where ambush risk remained consistently high. Its diesel powertrain maintained dependable output across long-duration operations, ensuring the vehicle could integrate into mixed convoys without creating gaps or bottlenecks. These operational patterns produced measurable effects in the field. Convoy security improved, incidents of immobilised vehicles decreased, and recovery teams were freed for more complex tasks instead of retrieving halted transports. Mechanics appreciated that the chassis behaved predictably, a rare luxury in a wartime fleet where consistency was often optional. The Protetto was not designed to dominate the battlefield, but it succeeded at the essential task of sustaining movement under pressure, a contribution that directly supported the operational tempo required in its theatres of use. The Protetto produced effects beyond its immediate tactical function. By relying on a chassis shared with the wider 626 family, it reinforced an industrial model that prioritised component commonality across military and civilian fleets. This reduced strain on spare parts distribution, since many mechanical elements, axles, braking components and driveline hardware, could be drawn from existing supply channels already supporting large numbers of related vehicles. Maintenance units benefited from this continuity, enabling quicker repairs and retaining operational readiness during periods of intense movement. There were also broader logistical implications. Protected transports allowed supply routes to remain open in sectors where unarmoured vehicles frequently suffered losses or delays. Sustained access to contested areas improved the predictability of fuel, ammunition and medical deliveries, shaping how ground forces structured their forward positions. Reliable movement acted as a stabilising factor in regions where shifting front lines created irregular demand patterns making the Protetto part of a wider network effect rather than an isolated piece of hardware. Civil output influence was less visible, but still significant. The reinforced building methods developed for the Protetto filtered into post-war adaptations of the 626 platform, particularly in sectors where stronger bodies or more durable mounting points were required, such as municipal pumps and heavier service vehicles. The durability lessons migrated quietly across factory floors, proving that wartime engineering has a habit of leaving footprints long after the conflict ends. In this sense, the Protetto shaped both its immediate environment and the industrial practices that followed. After the conflict, the influence of the Protetto continued through the vehicles that shared its mechanical ancestry, rather than through widespread surviving examples. The underlying 626 series architecture proved adaptable enough to transition into post-war civilian transport, emergency service fleets and communications vehicles that benefited from the chassis strength refined during wartime production. Designs that had been introduced to carry armour, such as reinforced mounting points and improved load-bearing geometry, translated effectively into peacetime applications requiring stable platforms for equipment, passengers or specialised systems. Manufacturers and engineers drew on wartime lessons when developing post-war Italian commercial lorries and buses. Techniques used to stiffen frames and reduce torsional flex became standard features in subsequent vehicle generations, improving durability on the challenging road networks of the era. The reliability of the diesel driveline, demonstrated under wartime conditions, supported its adoption in a broader range of industrial vehicles, helping to establish a lineage of powertrains that balanced economy with sustained output under load. These design traits aligned with Italy's wider industrial recovery, where proven components accelerated the return to full manufacturing capacity. 
The broader legacy lay in the principle of modularity. By basing an armoured carrier on an established transport chassis, the 665NM Proteto represented an early example of scalable vehicle development, an approach that later became common in both military and civilian engineering. Its structure showed that a single platform, if properly designed, could perform far more roles than originally intended. This adaptability remains one of the defining characteristics of the Fiat 626 family's long-term impact, extending the reach of wartime engineering into the mechanics of the post-war automotive landscape. The Fiat 665 emerged from a period where movement itself carried measurable risk and every kilometre demanded equipment capable of withstanding more than routine wear. Its armoured form, built upon a chassis designed originally for broader service, demonstrated how wartime engineering often relied on adaptation rather than reinvention. The vehicle's structure blended familiar mechanical foundations with new protective requirements, producing a machine shaped by necessity and framed by the realities of a theatre where supply routes functioned as strategic lifelines. The lasting reflection lies in how such vehicles influenced the wider understanding of mobility under pressure. Protection and transport, once treated as separate considerations, became intertwined in a design that acknowledged the shifting character of the battlefield. It illustrated that a reinforced platform could carry out transport duties while offering levels of safety that standard trucks could not achieve and it did so without abandoning the mechanical logic that made the base chassis dependable across long deployments. Its operational value rested on this balance between established engineering and the demands of contested ground. Modern service vehicles, built for resilience rather than conflict, echo aspects of this approach through strengthened bodies, adaptable mounting points, and drivetrains designed for consistent output under varied loads. The principle that a well-engineered platform can evolve far beyond its original purpose remains the clearest continuation of the Proteto's influence. The machine stands as evidence of how wartime design priorities can establish practices that persist long after the immediate pressures fade embedding durability and adaptability into the broader fabric of vehicle development. Thanks for spending your time with this video. If you'd like more documentaries on the machines and moments that shaped history, please consider subscribing. We would love to have you back.